In a sport where records are broken with fractions of a second, a sprinter's entire career depends on optimizing every detail of their performance to maximize their speed as much as physically possible. This is the story behind Nike's controversial super shoe. Take two starting from the intro. This idea of having a pair of super fast shoes has always been fascinating to me as a child and even now as an adult still is. For this reason, I was excited when I heard about these Nike super shoes that were being called technology doping. Many began asking if it could be used to break Usain Bolt's records. Some even claimed that using them was straight up cheating. This led to questions of my own, like what's so special about these shoes? Can they actually be used to destroy Usain Bolt's records? And are they even available for purchase? The Nike Vaporfly was first introduced in February of 2020 and is part of a line of several other running shoes, including the Air Zoom Alpha Fly, designed for marathon running, the Air Zoom Tempo, designed for speed runs, the Air Zoom Victory, designed for running 800 meters to 5,000 meter races, and the Nike Vaporfly, designed for the 100 meters. This is the controversial super shoe that we will be discussing in this video. Well, the line of shoes first gained major publicity in 2017 with a project called Breaking 2. Breaking 2 was a project where Nike teamed up with marathon champion Yulid Eli Kipchoge. I don't even know how to say his name. Elioid Kipchoge. Their goal, run the marathon in under two hours. Something that had never been done before. The fastest marathon ever ran officially is two hours, one minute and 39 seconds. A record which is held by Kipoji himself. Nike spent millions on the project crafting everything from the shoes to the running course. They even partnered with National Geographic to shoot a full documentary on it. During his first attempt in 2017, he came close but fell short with two hours and 23 seconds. It was still impressive because this was the fastest time ever recorded for a marathon despite not breaking two hours. Then fast forward to 2019 and he did what many believed was impossible. He became the first human to run a marathon in under two hours, covering 26.2 miles in an unofficial time of one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds in Vienna, Austria. The caveat here is that it didn't qualify for an official world record because it did not run under normal race conditions. Beyond that, it's safe to say the project was ultimately a great success and the only person happier was Nike's marketing team. I say that because the narrative is that Nike worked in collaboration with Kapoji to create the ultimate running shoe for this project, which is pretty insane. Imagine if Usain Bolt would have designed a shoe in a project called 3 for 1 right before setting three world records in 2008. Without a doubt, that would be the most popular track shoe to this day. In this case, the specific shoe used in the sub two hour marathon was a prototype of the Nike Zoom X Vaporfly called Alpha Fly, which as I said before, is part of the line which the Viperfly track spikes belong to. From that point forward, what the company was doing in terms of designing a shoe to break records began attracting massive amounts of attention. Between the success of the Breaking 2 project in the 2020 Olympics, at the time when the Vaporfly was announced in early 2020, the hype was huge. According to Nike themselves, the promise of the shoe was to quote, provide responsiveness and energy, and it quote, focuses on what athletes need most in the last 20 meters of the sprint. Some were excited about the possibility that the shoe could be used to set new records, while others opposed it, claiming it provided an unfair advantage and undermined the existing records of past sprinters. In order to understand the controversy, we have to take a look at its design. The Nike Viperfly consists of a lightweight upper fabric called Atomnit, a foam heel, carbon fiber plate, and zoom air pods located in the forefoot of the shoe. What makes this shoe different from any other track spec we've seen before are the use of the air zoom pods. Chances are you've seen them before, but what exactly are they? This is how Nike describes them. Tightly stretched tensile fibers are knit inside a pressurized Nike Air unit, giving the air zoom cushioning its snappy responsiveness. Each time an athlete's foot touches the ground, the fiber compresses to cushion the impact before quickly springing back up to the original state, generating an explosive, powerful response off the ground. While the technology itself isn't new, this is the first time Nike is putting it into a track shoe, and they're located directly under the forefront of the Viperfly. So is it all hype or can the shoes actually make you faster? There's essentially two ways to become faster. One is to increase the length of your steps, also known as strides, by putting more force into the ground. Two is to decrease your ground contact time. Simply put, take faster steps. Assuming this technology can deliver on the promise that Nike is making, in theory, this shoe can actually do both. This is the root of all the controversy, including concerns that this shoe is cheating, 
athletic organizations rewriting their rules, and even backlash from the legend himself, Usain Bolt. This is where we must ask, can they actually help someone destroy Usain Bolt's seemingly untouchable world records? Usain Bolt holds three world records. 9.58 in the 100 meters, 9.19 in the 200 meters, and 36.84 in the 400 meter relay. Have been untouched for over 10 years. Can these shoes change that? Well, the New York Times reported using the Zoom Vaporfly, an individual was four to 5% faster than a runner wearing an average shoe, and two to 3% faster than runners in the next fastest popular shoe. Assuming the same thing applies to the Vaporflies, for the fastest sprinters today, here's what a 3% improvement would look like. In a 100 meters, Christian Coleman currently has a fastest time of 9.76. 3% of 9.76 is 0.29. 9.76 minus 0.29 would put him at beating Bolt 958 record. In the 200 meters, Noah Laos currently has the fastest time of 19.50. 3% of 9.50 is 0.58. 9.50 minus 0.58 would put him at 18.92, also beating Usain Bolt's 19.19 record. We don't even have to do the math on the 400 meter relay. If we put two people faster than Usain Bolt on a relay team, we can safely assume that they would beat the record too. The question is, how likely are these results? First, we have to take into consideration that this is assuming the sprinter is running with perfect technique, which is rarely ever the case. Second, we have to take a look at what's already been done in the world of marathon running to see what the actual improvements have been from this technology. Using the prototype Alpha Flies, Kapoji officially ran the fastest marathon in a time of one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds. Prior to that, without the shoes, he has set an official time of two hours, one minute and 39 seconds. This marks a 1.63% improvement. Keep in mind that this was under highly modified ideal running conditions. Based on those numbers alone, it wouldn't be enough to break any of Usain Bolt's records. However, the third component we must consider is the improvement of each sprinter's performance throughout their career. Apart from the last two years, Noah Lyles has been consistently improving his 200 meter time as he continues to develop as a sprinter combined with a 1.6 improvement from a shoe like this. Although it'll be very, very tough, it's possible that he could break Usain Bolt's record in the 200 meters. Except for one small problem, No Laos is sponsored by Adidas, therefore won't be wearing Nike spikes anytime soon. What do you think? Do you think this shoe could be used to break records? Comment below. Shortly after the release of the Vaporfly in April 2020, World Athletics, the official organization that rules world championship events like the Olympics, set forth an updated set of rules to address the concerns that have been raised about shoe technology. The rules stated that for a shoe to be legal, it should be available for purchase by any athlete for at least four months prior to that competition. They also state that a shoe must not contain more than one carbon fiber plate. Additionally, for all track events up to 800 meters, track spikes must have a maximum sole thickness of 20 millimeters. They could have easily decided to outright ban the Vaporflies and Zoom Air technology entirely if they wanted to. However, they didn't. But the Vaporflies actually never released. Why? You can't find it anywhere. Nike.com, FightClub.com, not even StockX, which typically has the most exclusive shoes including a one-of-a-kind SB Dunk that recently sold for $52,000. The theory is that Nike hit the brakes on the shoes because it would not have been approved based on the new rules set by the World Athletics. The closest thing I could find to a statement is someone on Twitter asked, Yo Nike, when are the Viper Flies releasing? To which they responded, no news to share at this time. Will Nike ever release a shoe? According to the Times, they were shelved over fears that they would have undermined Bolt's legacy. To me, that just sounds like great marketing. In the process of editing this video, I actually found that they had released an updated version called the Nike Max Fly. These are designed for the 100 to 400 meters and have the same Nike AirPod technology from the Viperfly. Unlike the Viperfly, the Max Fly is on a list of approved shoes by the World Athletics, so I'm sure we'll be seeing these in high level competitions. What does this mean for the future of track shoes? It's very likely that another brand is working right now on a way to recreate the shoe without getting sued. This is only the beginning of a new era of shoe technology. It has already happened in other sports. In swimming, there was a line of competition swimsuit made by Speedo called the Laser Racer. Everyone wearing them at the 2008 Olympics wiped out the competition that year. With reports saying that 98% of all swim medals won at the Beijing Olympics 
were won by swimmers wearing the suit, including Michael Phelps, who used them to break world records and win seven out of his eight medals that year. Eventually, they were deemed to provide an unfair advantage, which led to a ban on all swimsuits using similar technology. The difference is that unlike swimsuits, nearly everyone owns a pair of running shoes. It's a much bigger market, which is why I believe that companies are gonna continue to push the boundaries while doing their best to avoid a ban. Although if anything, a ban would just help increase the popularity of the shoes. And that's probably why you clicked on this video. Now is a good time to hit the like button. It helps out a ton and it costs you absolutely nothing. I personally find it exciting that we're developing new ways to expand the boundaries of human capability. Not just in shoes, but also in training. As information spreads faster through the internet, some good, some bad, high performance training is more accessible to more people than ever before. Between new developments in athletic gear and better access to training information, I believe we will continue to see new superstars rise and redefine what is humanly possible. To see more content like this, check out this custom place I made for you. Hit the like button for me if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.